Hey guys, welcome to Outpost Pottery. Today we are talking about potter's wheels and I wanted to do a quick comparison video. I bought seven wheels in the past three years and that might seem kind of weird, but we've lived in several places and I've taught lessons here and uh, I want to just share with you some of the pros and cons of each of these wheels. So I have two wheels that look like this. This is the least expensive of the wheels on this board. Two wheels that look like this. I just got this in like three days ago. And the newest, this is the newer model of the same style. If you go on Amazon, you'll see a lot that look like this. They have different colors. They have, uh, but generally they look like this. Sometimes the controls are a little bit different. Sometimes it'll have a touch screen on here. If it does, don't buy that. I don't like the touch screen. Uh, but these wheels have the hand foot crank the hand crank foot pedal com combination, which I like a lot. It has the splash pan that comes off, which I like a lot because you can fit a Giffen grip on there. I like that the power cord comes off. What I don't like is four feet because in pottery and in life and geometry, three points define a plane. If you take three points in any configuration, you always have a not a flat plane, but a plane that will be level with the, the floor. So a frequent um, problem I hear with these wheels that I've experienced is wobbling. And the reason is because when you have four wheels, four feet, one of them almost invariably is gonna be slightly off. So it really, you just need to, this is a great wheel. This is actually the wheel that I recommend the most right now. Uh, it's my favorite of the budget wheels, of the cheap, the inexpensive wheels. Uh, but you just got to kind of fig configure the feet so that they're not wobbling wherever you are. Uh, well, here's another budget wheel. And I like this design better. I like the three wet legs uh, open and it's sturdy. This one feels really sturdy. The legs and the feet are really sturdy. Uh, the splash pan also comes off, uh, comes on and off real easy. Uh, I like it a lot. And uh, what I don't like about this one is the touchscreen. Uh, I think you should generally stay away from touchscreens for these. They're not useful. Sometimes you'll hit them and it'll either go in reverse, or it'll turn off, or it'll speed up real fast, or you just generally don't want a touchscreen. The foot pedals are better on here, uh, but, and it, this is better. This is obviously an inexpensive construction, especially when you compare it to something like one of these two. Uh, this is a plastic, but here it is a year later with all sorts of kids trampling on it and stomping on it and it's still working. So I'm not gonna knock it too much. It's clearly a different quality of this metal with high quality parts in there and this plastic with a little flywheel in there, a little gear wheel that controls the speed, but it works. You'll find this wheel on Amazon it comes in by a lot of different manufacturers. A lot of times how this, how the white labeling system works is you'll find a factory overseas that can produce a product for you and then they'll put your label on it and that you, you buy it from them, you buy X quantity at a much reduced price and then they'll ship it over with your label on it. But a lot of times it's the same model, oftentimes from the same factory. But anyhow, you'll see both of these on there in various colors and with different modifications, but they're generally the same. Stay away from LCD panels. Foot hand cranks are generally good. Uh, this pedal, this style pedal is on a lot of the budget wheels right now, and it hasn't broken in a year with little kids mashing on it, so it's probably gonna be okay. And that brings me to this wheel right here, which is one of my favorites. This is the Shimpo Aspire or Nidec. It is a great wheel and it's got these removable bats which are have different uh, center points. It's not 10 inch centers. They're more like seven or so. I'm not sure exactly. <coughs> but those come off and then this splash pan, it kind of locks in there nicely. I like that too. It's super light, it's super portable. You can throw it in a bin with some clay and then it's a self-contained unit on the go. So this is great for trade shows or for, you know, you're selling at a fair or you're doing a workshop or, or you just want to take it on vacation with you like I often did and sometimes do. Um, so this is a great wheel. The, this comes in two models. It has a hand crank, which is great when you're learning. The hand crank oftentimes is a little more deliberate when you're adjusting speed. Foot pedals, sometimes you can 
slip and it goes fast and it starts getting wonky here and it just takes some getting used to but this foot pedal is awesome this is a great high quality foot pedal every bit as good as a, a more expensive wheel that you'd find <clears throat> this last wheel is my go-to and it has never looked this clean since the day i bought it so this is the clay boss um, and it is excellent this is my workhorse i would say this is the wheel you want to get uh, that's faithful like the sun. So I have one of these. I've had this for two and a half years. Uh, my friend Lucas, who's been a potter for 20 years, has two of these. They've never given him any problems. This has never given me any problems. And it's just a very reliable machine. But the problem is uh, it's really heavy. So I have a bad back and I can't lift heavy stuff. And you don't want to be taking this to trade shows, and trade shows or fairs or anything you want this to sit up in one place and that's where it lives and that's how i use it is it lives right there uh, that's its home <clears throat> temporarily displaced for this video okay that's my quick and dirty pros and cons list of these different uh, wheels uh, if you want to go for power and productivity and it's not moving go with this one if you are moving around a lot or you just have a little bit of space and you need to clean up take down it needs to disappear go with the shimpo aspire and if you're on a budget go with one of these inexpensive wheels that you can get on amazon they are worth it they are a great value i wish they had been around when i got out of college because i would have gotten a pottery wheel then when i was getting out of college they were all like 1500 bucks and I couldn't do that. So I'm so glad that this is more accessible now. The barriers to entry are coming down and more people are throwing pots. Speaking of which, if you want to get started uh, with your home studio, check out my Studio Essentials course where I'll help you set up your studio, give you the things you need to think about, the factors in your unique situation so you can get set up and throw in quickly. Also, if you want the complete 14 point PDF of these wheels, all the criteria that I'm evaluating them on, you can get that free in the comments below. Hey, thanks for watching, keep learning, and I'll see you next time.